The 1950 Formula 1 World Championship was in many ways completely different to the current format of World Championship seasons. What we know already was how different the cars looked and how basic most of the tracks were. But there are many interesting facts that would surprise even a hardcore Formula 1 fan. In 1947, FIA defined the initial set of regulations which later came to be known as Formula 1. The regulations mostly revolved around engine definitions with aerodynamics and chassis not a major topic back then. Based on these regulations, FIA organized its first ever world championship. In the initial year, there was no constructor championship, but it was still a team sport with a number of drivers part of a single team. A total of 8 teams took part in the series, including the most famous ones Alfa Romeo, Ferrari and Maserati. Alfa Romeo back then was a front of the pack team with arguably the best driver of the first generation being part of their team. I am of course talking about Juan Manuel Fangio. While Fangio was part of Alfa Romeo, the second best driver of that era, Alberto Ascari, was part of Ferrari. While a total of 24 races happened across the world, FIA only counted 7 of them for the points in the World Championship. They were Great Britain, Monaco, Indy 500, Switzerland, Belgium, France and Italy. Points were awarded only for the top 5 finishers in each race, 8 for the winner, 6 for the person finishing 2nd, 4 for the person finishing 3rd and then 3 and 2 for the 4th and 5th position drivers respectively. One point was also given to the driver with the fastest lap in the race. Interestingly, only the best 4 finishes of each driver counted for the championship tally. Race 1 – Great Britain King George VI tented the event where Alfa Romeo and its driver Giuseppe Farina dominated with Farina winning the first ever F1 Grand Slam by getting pole, race win and fastest lap. His teammate Fangio had to retire in the race. Race 2 – Monaco Monaco 1950 saw Ferrari enter the Formula 1 championship. Fangio won the race ahead of Ascari in second and also got the fastest lap. In typical Monaco style, a major incident in lap 1 saw 9 cars DNFing. Race 3 – Indianapolis 500 Kurt Kraft Offenhauser won the race in Indy 500. The race was red flagged due to a rain a bit more than halfway through. Interestingly, most of the major European Formula 1 teams did not participate in that race. Race 4 – Switzerland with the US being the only non-European Grand Prix that year, F1 came back to Switzerland for the fourth race. The trend from Monaco continued as Alfa Romeo dominated with Ferrari closely behind. Fangio had to retire again this race as Farina won the race and also took the fastest lap. Race 5 – Belgium Belgium was no different as Alphas again locked out the front rows with Ferraris closely behind. While Farina won the pole, Fangio won the race. This meant Fangio was 5 points ahead of Farina, the two DNFs really hurting Fangio's world championship chances. Race 6 – France With everything at stake, Fangio brought home the victory at the French Grand Prix. In the race itself, Alfa Romeo dominated yet again. Farina had to retire in the race while his other championship rival Fagioli finished second. This meant that Fangio took the lead in the championship with Fagioli second and Farina third. Race 7 – Italy As the final race of the season arrived, anyone in the top 3 had a chance to win this one. Remember that this was in 1950 when technical issues were frequent and driver errors were not as rare as today where you get several hours of simulator training and strategies. Fangio clearly had the advantage in that he had just to finish in the top two. He started strong by taking pole in the qualifying. As Fagioli finished third, Fangio and Ascari was forced to retire due to technical problems. Farina eventually won the race and won the first ever world championship. Even though there was no constructors championship in 1950, 
If there was, then Alfa Romeo would have easily won it, locking out front rows for almost all races and winning every race except the US Grand Prix. And while Farina won the championship, it was mostly attributable to the several technical problems that plagued Fangio's races. When you look at the non-championship Grand Prix in 1950, Fangio ended up winning four of them compared to Farina's two. 1950 was the start of something truly special, and FIA did recognize the potential and invested in it further during the later years. We saw the legendary names like Fangio, Ascari and Ferrari take their first step towards immortality in that season, and also Silverstone and Monaco which later became permanent venues in the Formula 1 calendar. It was not as grand as the championship currently, but it definitely showed what Formula 1 can be as the ultimate test of engineering and driver skills. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, consider subscribing to the channel if you like to watch similar content, and stay tuned to I Am Formula for everything Formula 1. Until next time, take care and stay safe.